That is one thing that I really would love everybody to understand clearly, which is yeah. Oh, facts, bro. And you're you're, you're gonna you're walk you're gonna walk out of my will. There's wolves over there waiting to kill you. What is what has been some solutions? What are some boundaries? What are some things that you have done to fight the possibility of you relapsing? About with the conviction, was it more so that you felt it? You would feel the conviction at the very beginning, but then you became numb to it because of how much you kept chasing after your sin. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so initially, um, it's, it's like an alarm, right? So uh, if you leave your phone, there's an alarm going on, eventually it'll, it'll stop because you're like, okay, well, he's ignoring it. You missed your alarm. Um, and it's the same thing with conviction. So you'll feel the conviction, feel the conviction, feel the conviction. This is God trying to, you know, it, uh, uh, I, I think it's Jonah, uh, that God told him it's hard for you to kick against the goats. Mm-hmm. So God's trying to prompt you to go in a certain direction, but if you keep going in a certain direction, God will be like, okay, well then you're just going to head off in that direction then. Yeah. Oh, facts, bro. And you're you, you, you're gonna you're walk you're gonna walk out of my will. There's wolves over there waiting to kill you. Mm. But it's obvious that you don't want to stay here. And God is such a gentleman, and we have our free will. So He's just like, okay, well, I'm I'm trying to preserve your life. I'm trying to give you life and life abundantly. But you are so obviously choosing death. And I'm at, at a certain point, He'll leave you, let you go. It, like it talks about in. Uh, in Romans one, where he gives them over to to their lustful desires and yep. to a depraved mind, yeah. um, and that's a that's a scary place to be. That's a scary place to be. Yeah, man. I was uh, I was told so um, sim- similar ish story to your yours. I um, I'll be just as vulnerable back. Um, I I actually removed myself from uh, my church. Uh, because I felt like I was a cancer to it um, for similar reasons with lusts. And um, there's, you know, so much going on and, and, and uh, uh, adultery was involved and all of that stuff. And so um, I, I understand, I'm, I'm able to really understand what your thought process was and, and your feeling and, and that numbness that you were talking about um, where you head knowledge wise know, yeah, hey, I shouldn't be doing this, but at the same time, being able to either get away with it or whatever, but throughout this whole process, um, when uh, when it similar thing when it came out, obviously I got sat down from any kind of leadership or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, a thing that he said stuck with me and has, has forever stuck with me, which was um, I would I would I would be I forgot how now I'm forgetting the exact wording. I would rather be caught and know that I'm under God's grace for being caught than to not be caught. And, and so essentially he was just saying that like, it's scarier. It would scare him more when somebody says that they're not getting caught. Cause then it's like, right. yo, like you've been given over to your sin. You, you've been given over to that. So I'm right. actually more concerned about your life because of that. Mm-hmm. Getting caught is actually a blessing it actually it's protection yeah. mm-hmm. so, so um shout out to you i i, I agree with Nisha, uh for you to um also have the maturity and the understanding to recognize that when both your your dad and your other pastor um had kicked you out of of the church there um for you to understand that it wasn't a them problem but it was actually a a you problem so right what um so coming out of that right coming out of that obviously that that's actually mm-hmm. r- r- about about when like age wise when when was that kind of a thing so the uh the first time i was i was put out i was 20 uh that was back in the end of 2017 going into 2018 okay um and then the second time was in 2020 um it was end of 2020 and 2021. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. just a little two years ago now. Yeah. So, uh, so, um, so it's understandable then as to why you're even more, more aware of how serious it is. Even it, even if you feel numb to it, because it's still recent enough. Um, right. You know, and that's, 
um, you know, are situations like that, when people look at scripture and go, you know, oh my God, the Israelites, you guys are so dumb. Like you guys have been doing this thing over and over. Like you screwed up and you know, now you don't realize that God is who he is or whatever. And then, you know, all, oh, look, you guys, even though you got saved from Egypt and all that, now you build a calf. Right. And so um, right. It, it's easy for us outside of dealing with anything to go, oh, you guys are idiots. But then those of us mm-hmm. who are either in the, or very recently removed from it can go, oh yeah, nope, I can see how that happened. I, I lived yeah. that out. So what yeah. what has helped you to go, because you know, we don't we don't talk about just problems, we talk about solutions here too. What is what has been some solutions? What are some boundaries? What are some things that you have done to um fight the the possibility of you relapsing into something like that again? Um, actually it's a, it's an interesting, it's interesting. We're having a conversation about this. Uh, a friend of mine is kind of going through a similar thing. Um, not as severe. He actually did come forward himself, uh, caught it. Um, but he was asking me how I dealt with it. And, um, you know, I, I told him, I'm like, you know what you, you need to, uh, you need to identify what, what triggers it. Mm, um, yeah. what situations um, trigger that lust. And then what, what's your, what's your mindset? Because the devil's going to push the same buttons, put this, put you in the same situations that he, that, that is proven that you'll fall in Yeah, because you were creatures of habit. So if you make a habit out of falling in the same way, you'll fall the same way every time, identify what those are and then monitor those triggers. And once you identify and recognize a trigger, remove yourself uh, from that situation actively mm. and as fast as possible, be like Joseph, right? Potiphar's wife is trying to tempt him yeah. and he, and he takes off run and leaves his coat. You can have the clothes. I don't need that Gucci jacket. I'm out of here. <laughs> Forget it. Hand me the prison. I need the orange jumpsuit. I'm uh, get me away from this woman. He didn't, you know, um, have that kind of radical, view towards your sin and toward that that area guard it right it talks of yep. the bible talks about not giving the enemy a foothold right um which is just just a small indent in your wall just enough to get a toe in there so you can push his weight off of it yep that small that's how diligently you have to know where your triggers are and and watch those um and then i was talking to a pastor while i was struggling with with this and uh something that he said was train yourself to react differently right so he gave it he gave an analogy he said you know we as people are trained to recognize movement right yeah. so let's say you you see uh something flash by in your peripheral and you look and it's it's uh well i'm a guy so it's it's a it's a lady showing everything that you yep, know understood um and so he's like, that's not, that's not where the sin comes in. The sin comes in on the second look, mm-hmm. right? When you know what's over there and you look back, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And so he said, train your response to look away. Yeah, I know what's over there. I don't want any part of that. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Uh, that's one practical thing. Um, when I feel a lot of triggers, I pray a lot. I uh, read, I listen to Christian podcasts, uh, just get my mind away from that trigger and onto the things of God. Yeah. And that really, really helps uh, because now whenever I feel that trigger, it's, it's it, whenever the devil pushes that button, I know I'm getting a God, a, a bit, a, a God morsel of food instead of I'm going to feed, the, feed my, my, the lust of my flesh. I'm going to be my spirit instead. Amen. Uh, so, th- so that's kind of how I um, actively um, protect myself against falling back into that. Uh, yeah. No, I love that. It's it's uh, it's replacement, man. Like, there's so many people who um, they think that when they are struggling with something, that they just need to think of it less. Um, where mm-hmm. it's it's not it's not that. It's exactly what you're talking about. You have to replace it with something else. Um, you know, right. if it's for, you know, uh, talk about lust, right? It, uh, if you know mm-hmm. that 
um, you know, chemically your body uh, is uh, shutting down there, uh, you know, late at night and therefore you make dumber de- decisions at night. Well, that means you need to replace this staying up with going to bed, like just simply go to bed. Right. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, if it's, uh, if it's anything with your phone, if it's, if it's alcohol, like if it's, if it's whatever it is, if it's just, even if it's just laziness, like if it's just like the fact of like, I'm just lazy all the time. Right. Um, or, uh, gluttony, like things of which that, um, aren't really preached about as, uh, uh, as much as the mm-hmm. other ty- type of sins. Um, you, you have to replace it with something else because that's honestly the only way that you get freedom. Uh, because it's kind of like a, it's kind of like when if somebody's like standing up on something really high and they're telling themselves, don't, don't look down. Don't look down. Like all you're really doing is just building up that anxiety more. Right. So right, right. you as a man trying to tell yourself, don't look, don't look, you're building up that like, but, but I want to look now. Now I really want to look. Like, right. It's just, right. It's just, in well, us. And, and, and the more you tell yourself to, to not look right. You know, it's like that, that classic thing, like, Hey, Whatever you do, don't think of a pink elephant. Right. Immediately, everybody starts thinking about a pink elephant, and the more they try not to, the more detail they add to the pink elephant. That's good. Oh, it's got tufts around his ears. It's got... So the more you try and tell yourself, don't look, don't look, don't look, the stronger and stronger and more vivid the fantasy that you're constructing in your head. Oh, what, what, what if she's posed like this? What if she's bad in her eyes? What if she's looking at me? What if she wants me to go over there? What? Mm. Yeah. The more you try and and just brute force your way through it with no replacement, you're running on empty. You're gonna stall. You're stopping right there, and it's over. Yeah, you're gonna get caught. Um, and Jesus talked about that, right? He said, "When a demon goes out of a man, goes to dry places, and I'm gonna go back to my house." And he finds it empty. There's no replacement there, so he goes finds seven worse demons, and takes the takes the house back over and the wor- second state is worse than the first state right so if you don't replace it it's just gonna get worse yeah uh as you go along so it's very important that you do replace it with the things of god that's good bro no that's good man i love it I, and and um it's also very important and uh and know you touched on it as well it's also very important that you have to act on it immediately right um uh, mm-hmm. for for me for instance um, it is not necessarily that I did not know, um, you know, that I was feeling tempted or whatever the case may be. It was more of like, nah, I'm feeling it, but okay, I, I can get past it a little bit more. You know, I, I, I got a little bit more. I got, right. I got one more rep. I got one more. I, I can do this or whatever. Um, but obviously that cycle just kept me putting, it kept putting me in that same, you know, hamster wheel of, of sinning and, and, uh, and feeling the guilt and going back and forth and whatever. Right. And so, um, so I had to even just recently, um, you know, within the last month or so, uh, I you know I already, I already got some guys that you know I I do uh, life with enough that they're my accountability and all that. But like that night, bro, I was so I was so fed up with the fact that I'm like, yo, I am I am thirty freaking six years old. Yeah, I'm thirty six years old, and this same issue that i've had since back in 2000 when i first started going to church um right. is still a thing like that's that thing is too old like that thing is too old <laughs> to be something you know it is that, so, it is so true it you know it just you just get fed up with it and so yeah honestly bro right. like i got the accountability group yeah. and immediately text them right away and shout out to all of them because and and listen if you guys are accountable to anybody you know what really makes you accountable, and what really what really makes them know that you're accountable, uh, uh, or they're you're holding them accountable, is the fact that you hit them up right away. Like that night, I got a right. call from uh, from one homie. Then the next day, got another call from somebody else. The next day, got a call from somebody else, and like it was back to back to back. And then after a little bit of time, right. somebody hit me up and said, "Hey, just checking in on you. How are things going?" Like. Right. That, that's how yeah. true accountability is. Not like, oh yeah, yeah, bro, I got you. I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna pray for you, and then, you know, you never cir- and then they never circle back. And then months yeah. later, you back um, at the same point. You know, right, right, right. Um, yeah, no, it is. It is indispensable. And like um, something that did help. Um, it's not. It's not a. It's not a replacement for having a prayer life. Having 
actual accountability partners having that determination, I'm going to come forward by myself. But um, they have apps that, yeah. um, because, you know, like you, people telling you, hey, make sure you have a filter on your computer, make sure that you're, you know, but if you're the admin, if you're, if it's your computer, <laughs> You can right. take the, you can take it off at yep. any point. In, <laughs> but so there, there, there are apps that will alert your accountability partners if you try to turn it off. Yep. And it's not a filter. It's not a filter. It, you can go wherever you want. It's just going to alert your accountability partner what you're looking at. Yep. Um, and so it, it doesn't it doesn't change the desire. But it it does make you aware, just like God is always watching, now this other person is always watching and will get a report immediately. Um, and so my family had that um, growing up. And so it got to the point where if I would see a word that I knew would trigger the accountability software, mm -hmm. immediately, hey, I'm going to get, you're going to get an alert. Uh, this is what scrolled across my screen. This is what I was doing. I wasn't looking up anything, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. This is the, you know. And, and, you know, I'd get a text back from my parents like, eh, yeah, I saw it. Thank you. Carry on. And, you know, you're just like, okay, Whew. I wasn't, I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing anything, but you know, sometimes you were just like, you, you would dread to get those texts. Hey, what were you looking at? Yeah. And you're like, uh, yeah. Even if you were just like, bro, I was on YouTube, man. And it just popped up. It was in the recommended ones at the bottom. See, I'm yep. sorry. I wasn't watching. But, you know, and then like, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that you didn't click on it, you know, and I, you didn't type it in, but it just popped up on your screen. Um, so, like, stuff like that um, is is really good, too. But just having, but going out of your way personally to have that, that accountability and come forward, hey, I'm struggling. Yeah. I'm going through this. Yeah. Um, that's the best. Yeah, and, and I, I love what you say when you're talking about the desires are still there. So, um that is one thing that I really would love everybody to understand clearly, which is just because you might have overcome a certain sin um, or you are winning over a certain sin does not mean that you have not lost the taste for that certain sin, right? Mm -hmm. And that, that I think, is something that is um, overlooked which is what helps that cycle continue to come because it's kind of like, oh, I got victory, I'm good. It would be like an alcoholic going, oh, hey, I'm good. I've, I've done the AA, I've been doing my time or whatever. Uh, yeah, I can, I can meet you guys at a bar. Yeah, you know what? I won't, I won't have a drink at all. It's okay, I'll just eat some chips, right? Eat some wings, just hang out with mm -hmm. you. But he has not lost the taste for the alcohol. So right. being in the environment, smelling it, like you can kind of like you kind of like when when you see a certain food or something like that, whatever your mouth starts salivating, like you you know what the right. taste is. That is the same thing with our sin. So just that is a even a bigger reason as to why to create right. healthy boundaries, because just because you've overcome it, somebody who's come out of homosexuality doesn't mean that they've completely lost any and all desires and taste of wanting to be with the same sex anymore, right? Right. Now, it's just something that they have to put perimeters around. So that means that they may not be able to be uh, in a room alone, you know, with them. They may not, right. they may have to uh, limit their conversations, you know, and that's, that'd be the same thing with heterosexuals. Like, if I want to make sure that I'm not emotionally uh, committing adultery against my wife, I can't, and this is where I kept falling, bro, I can't keep talking to you. Like, I can't keep communicating to the same person over and over and over and getting right. that time, even if we're talking about nothing but just whatever, right? It's the fact that the the uh, uh, the heart starts to get connected, right? I, you start, right. Uh, you know, especially, hey, especially as a Latino, like, we, we, love, we love real good, okay? We love real good. <laughs> so, you know, you start building that connection and then you're like, whoa, wait a minute, I got, I am connected to you way more. Than I than I than, ought to be. Than I should. Yeah, yeah. And as a as a single guy, it is it is so it is so difficult um, to hold to to hold the reins, right? Mm -hmm. As you're as you're dating somebody, you know, mm. you're, to to not jump the gun on intimacy so that your intimacy outpaces your commitment. Wow. Um, and that, that is, that's such a struggle, um, to just really pump the brakes. Cause it, 
and this is this is my thing the way that the way that i love the way that i you know show affection is is physical touch so like it is it's hard for me to be like one i'm going at a snail's pace in my eyes right i'm going very slow mm-hmm. and i feel like i'm not even showing the love that i'm like i i love you more than i can show because mm-hmm. i can't touch okay. you if i touch you we're off to the races yeah and i'm out of here yeah. um and so that is that is so difficult but just you know asking god for strength asking god for um you know, to work on me yep. and, and just keeping my eyes focused on God rather than whoever I'm dating. And I'm single right now. God's working on me. So I'm not even looking, um, just yeah. throwing that out there. I'm not <laughs> looking ladies. <laughs> uh, get out my DMs. Get out. My DMs. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I will mention though, is the second time I was defellowshipped or excommunicated, whatever word you want to use, yeah. um, kicked out of church. Uh, I distinctly remember the first few weeks I was out feeling like I couldn't come back. Okay. Like I was, I was that. so far. So I, 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 this is a life from hell, right? But I was so convinced that I was too far gone, mm. that I couldn't come back, that it was just going to be the same cycle again. And I was terrified. Wow. And I remember calling up my pastor and I'm like, I don't know if I can come back. How do I know if I'm, if I'm so far gone, if I'm just apostate now, I'm like, you know, I'm just condemned to hell. How do I know? And, and what, uh, what he, what he told me, and it really, really set me free was that the fact that you're asking, am I apostate shows that you're not. Because you actually care whether or not you are. If you actually were apostate, you would not care. You would be like, I'm out of church. I'm never going back. Peace out. Yes, and, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. But I, I was on the verge of tears calling him, like, just going through it at work. I stopped talking to people, just, like, on the verge of tears for weeks. Just like, I don't know if I can come back, man. I know God has a call in my life. I know that he gave me this talent this this ministry i'm supposed to be doing stuff but i don't know if i can if i can be a representative i don't know if i can show the level of christ i don't know i think i've completely disqualified myself like i i'm not entering into the promised land i'm one of the children of israel that died in the wilderness for over the 40 years like i'm not making it in yeah yeah like but but the fact that i was like i don't know if i can come back but i'm like i want to come back i want i'm I know what I did was wrong, but, and I told him, I'm like, I don't feel any guilt, any remorse, any shame for what I did. I know up here that it was wrong and I was sinning against God and I, and I repent and I, I want to have a right relationship, but in here, I don't feel anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was terrified and I still am. Yeah. Yeah. Because I felt, I felt like, you know what, if this happens again, and if I let myself get to that point where I'm just that comfortable with my sin again, I am not coming back. Mm. I'm not coming back. That's good. Like God, God was saying uh, to me and, you know, the, hold the, hold the theological arrows, please. <laughs> this is just, this is my, this is my conviction uh, that God is telling me, I'm going to stop prodding you to come back. Mm. You want to leave, you can leave. Wow. But I'm going to stop prodding you to come back. Wow. If you want to, if you want to leave in just, you know, thinking like Luke 15, right? The the father didn't chase the, the son to the faraway country. He let him go. Yep. He said, if you want to come back, you can come back, but I'm not chasing you down. Mm. I'm not going to go find you in the pigsty. You can go live in the pigsty for as long as you want. And so I, I felt, I really felt that I truly felt that. And I really feel like that fear of God, right? The proverb says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, Mm -hmm. that fear of being permanently separate from God is one of the things holding me back in. Uh, cause I don't want to, I don't ever want to be out there again. I don't ever want to be out from underneath God's covering again. Uh, and that, cause it's terrifying out there it is the world 
chews you up, spits you out, has zero regard for you at all. Um, so that, you know, just that fear, that healthy fear, that reverence, that, you know, this is this serious. Yeah. You know, God killed Eli's sons. God killed Aaron's sons for this right there in, into eternity, right into judgment. And what's worse was both times God told their, their, their parents don't mourn for those kids. Yep. Don't mourn for those kids. Yeah. They knew it was coming. They wanted to play with me. They messed around and found out. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and that's how it goes. I'm not trying to be in that situation. So, yeah. you know, you, you do what you have to do uh, to guard that. Um, but yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. That's good, bro. That's that's heavy, man. That's heavy. Um, yeah, that's a uh, that's a lot to take in, bro. Um, uh, and I think it's so interesting we're even having this conversation uh, on my side because uh, there was a video um, that I found on YouTube that uh, was kind of talking about how to break uh, the the sin pat- pattern or whatever. There's an illustration uh, video where somebody was talking right while they were drawing and stuff. Um, great, great video. I, I loved, uh, mm-hmm. it's like, it's all the things that I've learned now afterwards. Right. Of course. Um, yeah. but I love that they hit every single detail, a lot of which that we've been talking about tonight. So I'll be reacting, uh, to our YouTube, uh, or on our YouTube to that video. And I'll definitely have it in a uh, accessible for our chat here to be able to pull up because, um, it is something that is very important. Um, and, and it's not just the, it's not just the, um, you know, the lustful person, you know, the alcoholic, right. the druggie, like it can, it, it, it's literally anything and everything, um, that, right. that you can think of, but, uh, it's a really good video. I feel like, again, it, it wraps it up, uh, says a lot of truths that kind of like anything else. When somebody says something, you're like, nah, I know it's like, yeah, I know, you know, but you don't apply anything, you know, so right. you, you, right. You understand, right? There's a difference between understanding and knowing, right? I can understand something, right. and that's the head knowledge, right? Uh, but the knowing normally means that you are acting it out, right? That you're actually walking it out. And so, hey, if you liked any of this content and you found some value in it, make sure that you like, subscribe, and of course, share it. Also, if you're interested in some more, go ahead and check out these videos. Till next time, grace and peace. Adios. Adios.